So, so the big question now is, is what happens? And so we're going on two months with this bloom that it's kind of gotten bigger and smaller, but it's still here. Uh, it could go through the whole summer if the conditions don't change. And because it's such a strange year, we really have nothing to compare it to. There's also, uh, there's reports that the El Nino conditions are starting up this year. And so what we're really wondering is, we have the warm blob now, we have this big bloom. It might go away for a while, but if the El Nino really comes in, we could end up with another really large bloom next year. It's at least possible that we're gonna have two years in a row with just the, this massive bloom across the whole West Coast. So one of the things that can happen if the wildlife isn't in the area, then the toxin doesn't always get into the food web. And so the last time we saw a big bloom like this was in the year 2000, and it really didn't impact a lot of wildlife. And, and we think looking back on it, it's because a lot of the wildlife were further offshore. This year, the offshore water is really warm. And so Monterey is sort of acting like this oasis where all the animals have come in to feed. If you're an organism that like a sea otter or a sea lion that's eating these fish, you're gonna get another dose of it there. Uh, we're finding uh, just very high levels of the toxin in the water itself. So at the Santa Cruz Wharf, uh, during a normal period when there's not a big bloom, we sample once a week. And so we go down there, uh, we take um, some measurements that tell us about the color of the water, which actually gives us a lot of information about what's going on in the water. And then we take water samples, and we use those to look at the nutrient concentrations, to look at what phytoplankton are present, including this potentially toxic algae. Uh, we take some of that water, and that's what we're using to, to look at the toxins with. We measure the temperature and the salinity and some of these other, other conditions from there. And, and then while we're there, we also have um, these bags of mussels that are hanging down there. And so the mussels are feeding on the phytoplankton and they naturally accumulate these toxins. And so we also, once a week, we bring back the mussels and measure the toxin concentration in them. And then that information goes to the state as part of their, their monitoring program. And so that's sort of a normal weekly sampling. When we have a big bloom like this, everything goes into overdrive. And so we're sampling at least three days a week, sometimes every day, to, to see how it's responding to changes in temperature and salinity and time of day. Uh, we're oftentimes we'll go down there and talk to the fishermen and ask them if we can get some of the fish they're catching, just to see if we're seeing toxin in that. And that helps us guide uh, the information we give to the state and also answer questions to the public about whether, you know, are the fish safe to eat. And, and so it's basically the same as our routine sampling, but just a lot more of it.